Well, welcome for the second part of One Man's Faith today. Now we're going to switch gears and we're going to jump into Hebrews. We've been studying Hebrews now for the past several weeks. And we're going to start with Hebrews chapter 5. We've gotten that far so far. So let's, um, and we'll, and let's just pick up in verse 1. And uh, we'll read the first four verses to start with. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed on behalf of men in things pertaining to God. In order to offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins, he can deal gently with the ignorant and misguided, since he himself also is beset with weakness. And because of it, he is obligated to offer sacrifices for sins, as for the people also for himself. And no one takes the honor to himself, but receives it when he is called by God, even as Aaron was. Okay, now this picks up in, in a thought already, okay? For every high priest taken from among men is appointed on behalf of men and things pertaining to God. Okay, so in order to understand what he's talking about, we've got to go back to chapter 4, since it's been a while since we've, um, since we've looked at that. Um, as we look at the end of chapter 4, now chapter 4, just to review a little bit, uh, we start with our, our, our let us concoction, okay? Let us fear, for, for if, while a promise remains of entering his rest. Verse 6, uh, no, not 6. Where am I? Oh. Uh, verse 11, therefore let us be diligent to enter that rest. And then in, uh, chap in, in verse 14, let us hold fast. And then in chapter, in, in verse 16, let us draw near. So we're getting into our lettuce concoctions. We got, we got four flavors of lettuce here. Let us be diligent to enter that rest. Let us hold fast our confession. Let us draw near. So he's talking about entering that rest. And we looked at that last week. And, and those that didn't enter that rest um, because of disobedience, it says in um, Verse 11, let us be diligent to enter that rest so that no one will fall short through following the same example of disobedience. And we talked about disobedience was unbelief. You could, here in this, we can equate disobedience with unbelief. Okay? And then he starts in verse 14, and he says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. And so we looked at that the last time, um, that he was tempted as we are, yet without sin. All right, Jesus was tempted, and we looked at that. We looked at Matthew chapter 4, where, where he was tempted by the devil. Uh, we looked at the fact that he um, uh, was taken and the, and the devil said, here are rocks, turn them into bread. And this is after a 40-day fast that Jesus has been on. You know that he was hungry. Oh, but he was God. No, listen, he had the power of the Holy Spirit with him. That'll take him through. But he still gets hungry as you and I are. Listen, he was 100% man too. Don't forget this. He was 100% man. These are valid temptations to him. As a matter of fact, uh, we have a scripture that says uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, no temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful and will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able but with the temptation will provide a way of escape also that you may be able to bear it. And in our verse here in, in Hebrews uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 15, it says, you know, we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, okay? But one who has been tempted in all things yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that, we may receive mercy and find grace and help in time of need. In other words, as we come to God, 
and say, Lord, oh, forgive me, I was tempted, I fell into it, then our, our high priest is able to say, Father, I understand what he's going through. And he's asking for forgiveness, and therefore I forgive him. And so he, he gives us mercy, and he gives us grace. Now, chapter 5 goes on with that. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed on behalf of men in things pertaining to God. In other words, he's kind of the mediator. He comes from among us, the high priest does, or I guess we could say, for every pastor taken from among men is appointed on behalf of men in things pertaining to God in order to offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. I like the way the uh, New Living Translation puts this. Every high priest is a man chosen to represent other people in their dealings with God. He presents their gifts to God and offers sacrifices for their sins. So he, he in the way the, uh, the priesthood and sacrifice and temple worship and all were set up, the ordinary man could, could only bring the gift or the sacrifice and the priest had to deal with it. And through that exchange, the man is forgiven. But the priest actually is the mediator. You see, he, ta he would take the sacrifice and offer it for the person. All right, and some of it, the person was a little bit more involved in that he ate some of the... He ate some of the sacrifice if it was a grain offering or there was a libation, which is, which is a drink offering. You know, some, some of them were poured out, but some of them were, were, were drank. Is that the word I want? Um, uh, as part of the sacrifice and the offering. But it was through the priest because he was the one trained in order to know exactly which parts to sacrifice, whether it was a burnt offering or or an offering that goes to the priest, or an offering, or a sacrifice that, that the individual themselves sat and ate after, after, it, was, after it was presented to the Lord. Uh, and so he would offer the gifts and the sacrifices. And he could deal, it says, he, he can deal gently with the ignorant and the misguided since he himself also is beset by weaknesses. He he is just like you and me, all right? In the same way, Jesus was just like you and me when he was on earth. He didn't have the sin. He, was, he walked through this life sinless because of the power of the Holy Spirit that he relied on. He learned to do what you and I need to learn to do, and that is to rely upon the Holy Spirit. He's been given to us for that purpose to bring all knowledge to us, to empower us, to help us be, carry through. That's his job in each one of us, is to do that. And so we're seeing, he's continuing on now, and it says, no one takes the honor to himself, but receives, receives it when he is called by God, even as Aaron was. Aaron was called by God. Aaron wasn't a priest until God called him to be a priest. All right, he became Moses' spokesperson and ended up being the first high priest. And so he was called by God to be that. God could have picked somebody else, but he didn't. He picked, he picked Aaron. And so in verse 5, it goes on to say, So also Christ did not glorify himself so as to become high priest, but he who said to him, You are my son. I have begotten you. And just as he also said in another passage, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. You see, Jesus didn't glorify himself. Jesus didn't say, hey, Dad, I'm the man. Make me the high priest. No, he, he, was, he was selected, you can say, by God. He didn't glorify himself to be high priest, but he became high priest because of two things. He is the son 
of God, and he came after the order of Melchizedek. Now, we'll talk about that later, what that means. As we get into chapter 7, we learn more about Melchizedek. An interesting thing here is this. Again, I've said before, these two quotes, you are my son, today I've begotten you, is from Psalms, chapter 2, verse 7. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. That is out of Psalms 110, verse 4. Hebrews uses a lot of psalm, and I say that again just to, just to try and solidify in your mind that the psalms are not just poetry, something to say, oh, that sounds nice. As we can see by the writer here of Hebrews, it holds as much weight as the law and the prophets do. Do you see? I mean, he's quoting over and over again from the Psalms, making his point of what he's talking about. So as you read, as you look at the Psalms, don't just think of them as, as nice, pretty, poetic literature. They're more than that. They're more than that. They are quoted by uh, the writers of the Bible over and over again and held to the same weight as the law and the prophets. Interesting point. Huh? Okay, let's take a quick break and I'll be right back. <laughs> 